Good afternoon, YouTube. This is Chris over at SkyTech Enterprise Solutions. And today we have a video on indexes in Splunk, right? So again, here's my brand new Splunk Enterprise installation. Um, I think it's about a week or two, maybe a week and a half um, old. And um, in our pre previous video, we took a look at uh, setting preferences and how you want Splunk to look when you first log into it. And I did select this interface here. Uh, I'm going to go over here to my preference and change it to the... Um, it's interesting. What... Uh, well, yeah, I'm going to go to... I'm, I'm going to go with search and reporting. Right, so that's what I'll go with for now. And the best way to find out if your change actually got applied is to click on this icon here and you can see your search interface. All right, so um, in this video, what we wanna do is look at a very key component of Splunk or a very key um, concept in Splunk. Now, Splunk reminds me very much of um, relational databases, right? So like SQL Server or Oracle Server. And the reason why I say that is that anyone that has experience with relational databases will see that, you know, you have tables and tables of data in these re relational databases. You have multiple columns, right? And then you can actually search those columns Right, you can run queries to find out um, certain information, right, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we're talking from tens and tens of rows, tens and tens of columns, to thousands and to hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of information. So these relational databases are very robust, and the same concept applies here in Splunk. Splunk can ingest a ton of data um, and make it available for you to search. Now, the key point we, we wanna talk about here is how does Splunk, or how does the relational database, but in this case, how does Splunk actually keep track of the data that you put into it, right? You just dump data and, you know, you can have Splunk monitoring a server that's generating, you know, gigabytes of data daily. Um, so how does, and Splunk is consuming this, this information, right? These log files, um, as we mentioned in, in another uh, video, how does Splunk keep track? How does it remember that you, you're, today you're looking for an event that happened, what, eight days ago, seven days ago, and there's a certain pass, a certain keyword you're looking for failed login attempts uh, within this time frame on this network. Okay, you're looking for users' IP addresses. You're using, looking for um, web browser names. You're looking for so much data, right? How does Splunk remember um, and make sense of it? So. This brings the whole idea of what an index is, right? And in, in, in the case of Splunk, you know, the index is simply a repository for data in Splunk Enterprise, right? The index files reside in flat files on Splunk Enterprise instance known as the indexer. Now, again, I think in one video we looked at um, what components of Splunk are installed when you, you do a local install. In this case, all components of Splunk are installed on this one laptop. Um, in a network environment, you know, you may install the forwarder on a different server. You may install the indexer on a totally different machine, right? So you can scale Splunk in that sense. Um, but on a very small scale installation, such as mine, the whole um, software is installed on one computer, which is my laptop here. All right, so if 
you take a look at this page we're looking at, it simply says indexes, right? And the first column says name. Here you have your actions, type, app, current size, max size, event count, earliest event, latest event, home path, frozen path, status, right? And um, when you look at the max size, yeah, these are big numbers. You know, this is probably the max on one of my hard drives, right? So I, I definitely don't want Splunk to generate this much information on my computer or else I will run out of space and my computer will stop, will stop working, okay? Current size just tells you that, hey, you know, this is the actual size. This, so for instance, this index is one megabyte, right? That one here is 120, this is 1.22 gig, and this one is 508 uh, megabytes, okay? We have 15 indexes. One of them here is disabled, right? So I can go over here, go into edit, and I can look at some of these um, settings here. I can say, well, I want this index to be a max of, let's say 250 megabytes, right? I, I certainly don't want this to be in the gigabytes um, because I don't wanna run out of space. I'll keep my max size, which means the, the largest size that this index can grow to um it is 500 megabytes okay and i'll keep i'm gonna click save here all right and of course these are um custom indexes that i created and so i can actually go in there and make changes to them um, i'm not as you notice i'm not touching the um, originally um, installed or out of the box splunk indexes okay so all right guys let's make this more interesting we're going to go over here and we're going to create a new index okay all right we're going to call this my second oops second index and as you can see here you know you cannot create an index and have spaces between the name, right? Or the words, if you will. You either have all the words budding together, just like that. And sometimes it makes sense to use camel notation, meaning, um, you know, the first letter is uppercase, so it kind of makes it easier to learn, I mean, to read, sorry. Um, or you can actually put dashes, um, underscores in here to fill up the space to make it much, much more easier to read, okay? So I'm gonna call this my second index. And I'm pretty much gonna leave these items here by default, but I'm gonna change this to 120 megabytes. And then this one will do another 250 megabytes. Those look like good numbers to me. I'll leave the frozen path as it is. And where do I want this to appear, right? Um, I'll keep it right where it is on the search and reporting, um, and I'll just hit save. Okay, so now if we go over here, all right, or if you do a refresh, you'll see that my second index has appeared over here. Of course, it's hundred. It has a maximum size of one hundred and twenty megabytes. Um, Right. I thought I said more. Right. Okay. So the max of the entire index is 120. And then the max of the warm, hot, cold bucket is 250. Okay. So that makes sense. All right. So guys, that's how you create a an index for yourself, right? We can go ahead and disable it, meaning that Splunk will not run it at all. It's disabled here. We can go ahead and en enable it meaning that it will run if um, if it's called upon to run, right? OK, 
Okay, so let's go here. Let's check that out again. All right, everything here looks good. Yeah, so see, the more you click on these options here, right, the more hard work your computer has to do or the more computation Splunk itself has to do, right? So if I were to go and click on enable, you need to read why, I mean, what you're enabling, right? And here it says, enable this if you want Splunk to compute hashes on every slice of your data for the purpose of data integ integrity. You may wanna do that in a very, um, um, where the stakes are high, like you're involved in this financial company where, you know, you're dealing with people's credit card info and social security numbers and credit card processing and online transactions, stuff like that, you might want to uh, encrypt data as much as possible, right? So you want to compute hashes on every slice of data for the purpose of data integrity. That makes sense, right? In my environment, you'll see the data eventually we'll, we'll start working with. These are just data coming off of spreadsheets um that are not that critical right they're not that mission critical so yes i'm going to disable that and that's going to save processing on my computer okay so we're going to hit save here and there you go All right you want to delete an index I guess we can do that as well. So I have this index here that is, let's see. Uh, you know what? I don't want to delete that index. So let, let's create an index that we can delete. How about that? And again, uh, what is an index is basically a repository for Splunk data, okay? This is data that has not been previously added to Splunk. It's referred to as raw data. When that data is added to Splunk, Splunk indexes the data and uses the data to update its indexes, creating event data. Individual units of this data are called events. So technically what's going on is that once you import data into Splunk, Splunk grabs that data and adds it to its index. Okay, and the index is basically an arrangement of data, right? It's just like it's just like you're filing files in an old school filing cabinet, right? Um, I remember I used to work at Accounts Payable. I think it was my freshman year, my first job on campus, and my job was to file uh, Accounts Payable paperwork in a file cabinet, right? This cabinet was about six feet tall, and every time you pulled a drawer, you had all these hanging, um, what do you call those? Uh, it's, it's basically like a voucher pouch, right? And on each folder you have, it's all alph alphabetized. So it's A, B, C, D, and then you just put these names that start with A, names that start with B in there. So you sort of create an index, right? So down the road, if someone comes, if, if John Doe comes and says, you know, um, you know, I, I, I went on travel, put in all my receipts and you guys did not refund me, you can go and easily find Mr. John Doe's um, file simply by going to the section where it has names uh, starting with letter D, right? So that's your index. So arranging data makes it easier to find. You're indexing data so it's easier to find. If you were to just simply throw all your accounts payable files into a heap, when when John Doe comes over and or Jane Doe shows up, it's just gonna be almost next to impossible to find Jane Doe's file. You might find it, but it might be 10 hours later because you did not index it, okay? If you were to index the files, then it's easier to find. So again, same concept here with Splunk. Splunk, indexes data. You threw a ton of data at it. It, it. it actually arranges that information into a neat little index so that the next time you come to Splunk and say, hey, show me John Doe's file, Splunk says, voila, there it is. 
right? So the whole concept of indexing, and this is not only in Splunk, it happens in uh, relational databases, as I mentioned, SQL Server, Oracle, even Microsoft Access. Uh, don't quote me on that, but Access does have a way of arranging information. It might not be called indexing, but um, even, in, in, even in Excel, right? you can select a column and actually arrange it, right, sequentially. And that is a, a form of indexing, right? So the whole concept of indexing is arranging data um, in, in a manner that makes sense. In most cases, it's sequentially, whether it's numbers, you know, from one to infinity, or if it's alphabets, it's, it's from A to Z, okay? All right, so we're going to create a new index, and we'll call this delete this index and guys you remember um actually you know what let's let's test this theory right let's find out if this actually works okay um so we're going to leave all these spaces right here in the middle of these names all right we're going to leave most of these things optional we'll leave enable optional and we'll just say uh 100 megabytes yikes not 100 gig the maximum size of this entire index is going to be 100 megabytes right and then the max size of the of the hot warm cold bucket is going to be 200 megabytes okay and we're going to hit save now as you see i mean we're not doing much with these indexes we're just creating them we're not populating them with information or data we're not loading files into these indexes we're just creating them and just letting them sit because the whole point of this video is to show you how to create an index only okay in the other videos we'll figure out how to import data and and have them show up in indexes now we tested a theory right so we get an error message that says index names may contain only letters numbers underscores or hyphens right hyphens allowed underscores allowed they must begin with a letter or a number. No spaces allowed here. But we're going to do a dash, which is a, a hyphen, and we'll do an underscore here. See what happens. Save. Look at that. It did save. So if I were to go here and look for delete, that's it right here. Delete this index. So we did create an index. It did get created. And um, it's alive, right? So let's go back here. I just want to see. All right, let's see an index that's actually. Um, so this one here is an internal index. It's got what? 9.58 events in here. Let's see. Maximum size is what? Goodness. It's 50,000 megabytes. Mm. Not sure if I want it to go that far. So I'll just bring this down to two. Save. All right. Well, we are going to delete my index that I created. So we're just gonna, well, first let's, um, disable it as you can see all right it's disabled and then the next time we are going to simply go in here second so we're going to enable it and then now we're going to delete it all right are you sure you want to delete the index named delete this index any data in the index delete this index will be deleted and not recoverable yep we want to delete it all right it's gone guys so that's uh our video for today again the best way to find your indexes on your splunk installation is simply come out here to settings click on indexes and you'll see a list of all your indexes here. All right, guys. See you in the next video.